Michael Jordan, formerly of the Chicago Bulls basketball team, has some fanatic fans that claim that he's able to jump and remain in the air for two full seconds from launch to landing. Evaluate this claim by calculating the maximum height that such a jump would attain. For comparison, Jordan's maximum jump height has been estimated at about one meter. So pretty much what they tell us here is that the claim is two seconds. So two seconds. He's in the air. That's that's the claim. Oh, I take that back. Hold on. So the time that he's in the air is two seconds. Tell you in just a moment why I take that back. I'm not going to write it down here just right now. Let's look at what other kind of information we have given. Of course, um, no other information is um, given in the problem, but let's see what else we could come up with. Well, he's under the influence of gravity, so minus 9.8 meters per second squared, negative. He is, this is what we're supposed to come up with, the vertical distance y, and let's say that for the total one to come up and down, that's the two seconds, it turns out if we use that, then this one here would be some kind of value and this one would be some kind of negative value the jumping speed he has to take he has to have some kind of takeoff speed otherwise he's not going to get anywhere so so this one you cannot at this point be zero but this one here would be some number and this one here would be some negative number just before impact and we would have two seconds here and it turns out that no matter what equation you use you're not going to come up with something for the um, distance here. You just have too many variables. So we have to use a trick and that is, it's not going to be too bad, he takes off, he's going to go up and he's going to come back down. Well if we just take half the flight that means going from here to here, well then um, we know something about the peak velocity here and the, at the peak here that would be zero meters per second. We still don't know that velocity down here, but um, at least we have some other piece of information. At And at this point here, what I would have to do is I would have to say, well, that's only half the flight, and by symmetry, going up is going to take as long as going down. It's going to be 1.0 seconds. Nope, I take that back. Just one second. We don't know actually how many significant figures. They just say two seconds so it's one second on the way up. Now we have one more piece of information and we filled in the time and now you look at the equations and it turns out you still don't have an equation that fulfills that. The closest one we could come up with would be 3.5b and that one says y equals v0y times time plus one-half ay t squared. But we don't have that v0y, what we do have is the vy, so we're going to do another trick. As I said, by symmetry we can assume that this is one second up and one second down, and we found that the final speed is zero up here. And we can do that for the other part as well. By coming down, we're going to have a certain velocity up here, and then we have a certain velocity down here and we know that velocity of on the way down that would we we would consider that now the initial velocity if we just use that second part of the jump and that would be zero meters per second and of course it takes one second to go down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one here actually at least I tried well I'm just gonna put it over there that one is gonna go over here and now I can actually use that equation because now I know the initial velocity, it turns out to be zero, and so this one here is now calculated from the peak down. And now the rest is given here. There we go, there we go. And so in order to calculate it, yep, just plug in the numbers. You will notice that for the height, 
you're going to come up with a negative number and that makes sense because we're dealing with from the peak going down and then of course we may want to write thus on the way up it's the same distance y equals except it's positive I'm not even going to give anything away if I actually do the problem because I'm going to have one half times negative 9.8 times one squared you know, so I'm going to come up with negative 4.9 meters which means that the total distance is 4.9 meters and if that was true of the two seconds in the air then Michael Jordan would have jumped 15 feet into the air and that's not his head, that's not his body, that's his feet and that just is not going to work so that is overestimated if we assume that the one meter is correct so the feet are actually one meter above the floor then we could make a comparison calculation of saying sorry about that was supposed to be a straight line um, compared to estimated compared to estimated and sorry about my handwriting too this is it's a little tough with this tablet to do that compared to estimated y equals one meter and what I can do there is I can use the same equation up there and with the peak height I'm sorry the peak velocity being zero so I would just use this one here one half a y t squared and then I could figure out well what's the actual time and that would come out to two y um, divided by a y take the square root because it's again on the way down that y would be a negative one so two times negative one meter divided by negative nine point eight I leave out the units sorry about that and I do that on the side and I come up with 0.45 seconds so on the way down it's half a second and on the way up it's also half a second so roughly a second total compared to an estimated two seconds and I excuse the fans there that one second does sound that you know you could easily exaggerate on that and make two seconds out of it one thousand one thousand one one thousand two and so that overestimation can easily happen but he sure is in the air only for one second because that um, gives them a reasonable vertical distance.